Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. There's no doubt that every government comes to office having made promises. The coalition came to government and it made some promises. Greater access to medicines delivered. Lower taxes delivered. Lower unemployment delivered. More funding for infrastructure delivered. More funding for mental health delivered. More investment for energy assets delivered. But, Deputy Speaker, the Albanese Labor government, with its promises, has a very different track record. Let's have a look at the track record of the Albanese Labor government after only about nine months in office and ask whether or not they have delivered or they have broken their promises. They promised cheaper mortgages. Broken. They promised lower inflation. Broken. They promised no changes to superannuation. Broken. They promised no changes to franking credits. Broken. They promised no new taxes. Broken. But here's my favourite of all, my favourite broken promise so far. Favourite because it exposes the rank hypocrisy of the Labor Party, but it's not a favourite in terms of me enjoying it because the Australian people are the ones who feel the pain. The Albanese government promised the Australian people that household power bills would be reduced by $275. Has that been delivered or has it been broken? Broken. Absolutely broken. Every single member opposite, every single member on the government benches were very happy in the lead up to last year's federal election to share social media posts of the Prime Minister committing to the Australian public that he would ensure their power prices came down by $275. Every single member of the Labor Party, every single senator. And yet here they are today, still knowing they have a broken promise and they will not deliver that. So instead of delivering a $275 reduction in power bills, the average power bill since they came to government, Deputy Speaker, has increased by $700. So think about that, an increase of $700 for households. You promise a decrease by nearly $300. You deliver an increase by $700. And what's the variation? What's the difference? $950. Thank you very much for the member for, member for Fisher. That is nearly that is nearly $1,000. Members on the government benches are dumbfounded. They're not good at the detail. They're not good at the maths. But that is a variation of around about $1,000. So, in other words, you have already cut short. There's a shortfall in what you promised the Australian people and what you are delivering by $1,000 already after only nine months in office. In the midst of a cost of living crisis of all times, Deputy Speaker, this government makes purposeful decisions that in fact drives up the price of energy. Now, I mean, from our end, from the coalition's end, did we seek to get energy prices down? We sure did. Absolutely. And in the last term of government alone, we did. The last term of government alone, we saw energy bills coming down for households by 8 per cent. For businesses, under the coalition, they came down by 10 per cent. For industries, they came down by 12 per cent. The coalition delivered lower energy prices. The Labor Party promised to go even further, but prices are skyrocketing. But then, Deputy Speaker, today became another day of revelation. We read this morning that power bills are going to go up yet again over winter. They will increase by 20 per cent, an additional 20 per cent from where they are today. 
This is where power bills are going over winter. Now, let's not forget, just before Christmas, the Prime Minister recalled Parliament. After having power prices blown out, he made a second promise to the Australian people that he would fix it. Power prices would be coming down. Relief would be flowing as of April this year. It's not going to be happening. And now we find out it's going up even further by 20 per cent. So, Deputy Speaker, we can stand in this chamber and we can bang the table on this. But in truth, the ones who really count on this are the ones at home. You know, we don't know who's listening to this, but there's bound to be senior citizens. Probably the same senior citizens who have contacted MPs in this office. I bet both sides of the chamber. And they're struggling. They are genuinely struggling to put food on their table. We're talking about seniors that a lot of them don't know if they're going to be able to turn the heating on. And this is in winter. This is Australia for crying out loud. We're one of the most prosperous nations on earth. But we have our most vulnerable worrying about whether or not they can put heating on in winter because Labor's power bills. This is so concerning for families. Businesses, I mean, I was speaking to, to smelters and steelmakers the second half of last year who were telling me they might have to close up shop and move, relocate to China and India because of the power bills. And what was the answer from the Labor Party's um, policy suite to this? They decided to introduce a carbon tax. They've decided to actually make it more expensive for manufacturing businesses, risking a loss of businesses and closures. This comes down to a fundamental divide, Deputy Speaker, between the way that the coalition looks at the world and the way that Labor looks at the world. You see, on the coalition side, we absolutely get the need to reduce emissions, and that's why we smashed all our targets out of the ballpark. We reduced emissions by over 20 per cent on 2005 levels, yeah, right? Yeah. The Labor Party are already falling behind their own target. They took a target, they legislated, they never did any economic yeah. modelling for it. But we struck a balance because we knew that in order for us to tackle that challenge, you can't hurt the Australian people. You can't botch the Australian economy. And that is precisely what Labor is now doing. And it is on them. The amount of times we have said, do not go down the path you are going. On this side, the coalition, we back industry. We back enterprise. We back technology. We back the innovative genius of Australians. But the Labor government, they believe in big government, big unions and big taxes. And at no point has this socialist-like approach helped reduce power prices and make life easier for Australians. And yet the minister responsible of all days when we find out this morning that power prices are going up by 20 per cent over winter, the Labor Party had a Dorothy Dixer in question time where the minister was given an opportunity to show off about power prices. I do not know of any government that has been so removed from the reality that people are feeling at home. We had the minister celebrating the fact that power prices are going to go up even higher. This is a minister who has not done one day of work outside politics in his, in his life. Not one day of work outside politics in his entire life. He does not get how it works in the real world. But of course, he sits across the table um, in cabinet there from a prime minister who, by the way, has never done a day's work in his life outside of politics. And they look across to the treasurer, who might know the numbers. Of course, the treasurer has never done a day's work outside politics in his entire life. But the prime minister talks about a new era in energy policy. That the treasurer is redefining capitalism. The Minister for Energy thinks that he's, what is it? That's right, it's the new industrial revolution. So ushering new eras, redefining capitalism, a new industrial revolution, and not one of them know how the real economy works. And this is why, Deputy Speaker, Australia is in the problem state it is today. Every single time it's the Australian people that pay, they're paying again under Labor. 
$275 is what you promised. The Australian people expect it to be delivered, and so does the coalition.